Bud Royster said, what's the best out-of-conference football game this season? Well, I cannot narrow it down to one. So I've got a list here. You guys can share the ones because I couldn't fit them all on here. You guys can share the ones you're excited about. Do you know in week one, I've got three games on this list from week one. You know Miami plays Florida at Florida in week one. You want to talk about pressure on a football game. Uh, Again, one of the many reasons I love college football is because you could have a game in week one where both coaches are being doubted. I mean, one coach is just straight up on the hot seat. They're over under win total at Florida's five and a half. They know they've got a murderer's row of a schedule this year. And then conversely, you got Mario down at Miami and the entire country screaming, yeah, he can recruit, but can he coach? Can he win on Saturday? Someone's got to lose this game. Okay, can you imagine leaving this thing 0-1? How toxic it will already be by the second week in September And conversely, you know, the winner's got a leg up, at least theoretically, has got a leg up perception-wise. It's not a conference game. But I I just think about that. I think about the team that starts 0-1 there. That's the kind of consequence that exists in this sport even early in the season. Texas is at Michigan the very next week. Week two, SEC versus Big Ten. Texas has got the third best odds to win the title this year. Michigan's got the seventh best odds. Texas is a, an early two-and-a-half-point favorite in this game at Michigan, according to our buddies at FanDuel. What a moment for Sharon Moore. Like, yeah, it's a big moment when you find out your head coach is suspended and you're the interim head coach and you got to face Penn State on the road, but it was almost like it happened so fast you don't have time to be worried or nervous. Well, now you're the head coach permanently. Now you got months and months and months to build up, and it's your team. It's your program. You're not just holding the wheel for someone else. And Texas comes to town in week two. And then all of a sudden, you got Texas in the same position they were last year. Last year, they go to Alabama. They win in week two, and they're off to the races. Well, they could go to Michigan, win, and sort of feel the same way, be off to the races this upcoming year. Oh, what a helmet game, by the way. The Longhorn and the maize and blue, what a helmet game. That's one where you don't need to know any of the names of any of the players. Just put the game on mute for all I care and just watch the pretty images go back and forth. How about Georgia at Clemson? It's not at Clemson. Georgia versus Clemson is in Atlanta in week one. Georgia's, uh, actually, before I give you the point spread, for those of you who haven't checked FanDuel, anyone have a guess? Well, now that you see it on the screen, you know. Georgia's minus 12 and a half against Clemson. Garrett Riley, the OC at Clemson. Cade Klubnick, quarterback there at Clemson. They're year two together now. I have spoken about Clemson at length. Georgia's a mainstay. They're in this position every year. It's a virtual home game in their backyard, although Clemson's not much further up the road. But uh, here's, a, here's a question. There are two teams right now where if I talk about them not being in Tier 1, their fans very vehemently disagree. Uh, One is Clemson. The other is USC. So I'm not talking about USC right now. With Clemson, if I'm wrong about that, and Clemson is a Tier 1 program still, and they're a Tier 1 team, and I do not believe they are right now, um, I'll know. We'll know. Because whether they win or lose, this won't be lopsided. Now, if I'm right, there is the opportunity for Georgia to pull away and win by 20, 25 points. Uh, But if I'm wrong, and, or, or if I have been right, but Clemson is changing the narrative and, and they've, they've shored up a lot of their inefficiencies, well, then all of a sudden, this is a dogfight of a game and everyone's watching it saying, wow, Clemson's tied with Georgia with five minutes to go. Remember, they lost to Duke last year. They ugly lost to Duke. Good for Dabo. So that's why we play the games, obviously. But this is a very, very big, big, important game for the program. Like, this is not important for Georgia's program. It is very important for Clemson's program. Uh, Next up, same week, USC plays LSU in Las Vegas, the building they just played the Super Bowl in, the building the last Pac-12 championship game was played in. Yeah, that's where LSU is a six-point favorite at FanDuel right now against USC. Just show me the defenses. Just show me. I'm not going to say that. That's That's a surefire immunity. Show me the defenses. DeAnton Lim. Brand-new defensive coordinator for USC, one of the most important names in college football this year. Blake Baker, 
new D.C. at LSU, one of the most important names in college football this year. These were pinball offenses at various times last year. LSU's quarterback won the Heisman Trophy. Over-under is 66, I believe, in this game right now. Show me the defenses because the ultimate hopes on both of these teams rest solely on how much better those D.C. hires and those defensive staffs can make those defenses and those units in year one. Uh, because either one of them last year, especially LSU, you give them a top 30 defense, they could have won the national championship for all I know. But they didn't have one. And so they got beat by the likes of Alabama and, and FSU just running the score up on them. Uh, lastly, go all the way to week 10. South Bend, Indiana, week 10. Florida State comes to town. Notre Dame's off a bye. They welcome in Florida State. And here's what's interesting. From an FSU scheduling perspective or a Notre Dame scheduling perspective, Notre Dame faces one opponent this year with preseason national title odds better than them, and it's Florida State. So I'm not, I'm not going as far as to tell you Notre Dame will be favored in every game this year. Maybe they will be. Uh, but this is the one team that Vegas thinks more highly of than Notre Dame in the preseason who they face this year. Riley Leonard, who is now the quarterback at Notre Dame, Remember, he played at Duke last year, and when they played against Florida State, he was banged up really bad, had under 70 yards passing, and he gets another shot at them. But more importantly, like I said, this is not week one, two, or three. And if you look at their schedule at Notre Dame right now, they go to A&M in week one, which also could have been on this list. I don't want to just gloss over that. Notre Dame opens in College Station this year. Mike Elko's first game as head coach there. So you got a bunch of like Northern Illinois, Purdue, Miami, Ohio, Louisville, Stanford, Georgia Tech, Navy. They'll go off the national radar for a little while, and then everyone will be building up to that Florida State game, and that'll be really good because obviously it's all out of conference with Notre Dame. But for Florida State, man, they go up there in November. You've been in Northern Indiana in November? It doesn't feel like Tallahassee. I do know that. So those are some games I'm looking forward to in the out of conference.